Hello, everybody. Good afternoon or good morning. Uh, my name is Lydia Kostic Kaczaturian. I am the uh, founder and the curator at ACA Project, based in Dubai and in Venice. My name is Kelichi Waneri. I'm a contemporary artist from Lagos, Nigeria. I live in Lagos, Nigeria, and I work in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. Very good to have you with me today, Kelechi. Are you calling from Lagos now? Yeah, I'm coming from Lagos. Yeah. I guess, where are you now? I'm in Dubai. How is the weather in Dubai? Uh, today we have a very uh, smoky day, kind of, like much sand in the air. It's not really uh, pleasant. Luckily, I'm very high on, on where I live, so I see above the clouds, let's wow. say. <laughs> Wow, it's about 20, 25 degrees, so it's also kind of uh, warm and uh, hot. Wow, it's 28 degrees in Lagos. Oh, wow. It's what, time, what is the time there? 11 a.m. Okay, okay. So you are before lunch, I'm after lunch. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Listen, can you, can you please tell me a little bit what are you working on at the moment? Uh, currently, I'm preparing for a solo show in Berlin and at the same time for Art Dubai. But personally, yeah, I'm, personally, I'm working on an art project where I'm trying to research on Igbo religion. Igbo is an African culture. Yeah. Okay, can you, tell, can you tell me a little bit more? I, I know that in, in Nigeria you have like a lot of, uh, how we call it, groups, a lot of uh, different uh, beliefs. Yeah, yeah. How many? I know that there are like an amazing number of different groups. Yeah. We have we have we have a lot of ethnic groups in Nigeria, and but basically there are three. The yeah. Igbo, the, yeah. No, basically three, but there are a lot. They have a lot of micro ethnic groups, but basically there are three: Igbo, Yoruba, and Hausa. And I'm Igbo, so that's why I'm researching the Igbo religion. Basically, trying to you know document the stories and myths about that. I see. This is why you're using a lot of signs on in your art. Yeah, those signs. Those signs at first, they I put them there to you know reflect the 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 subject, like what the subject is about. But the marks are inspired by the idea of tattoos and scars. Mm -hmm. You understand the idea of um, having a mark on your body that tells a story about the person. But aside from this, in Igbo culture, there's something called Ichi. Those Ichi, they are sacred markings. You get this. This is another angle where those marks on my works come from. Okay. To say that, yeah, to, to say that chiefs and um, probably people that want to carry out sacred activities. They have to be marked in certain ways. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. I know that you're working on, on canvas using a, uh, oil paint. This acrylic is your and charcoal. Acrylic and charcoal and oil. Yeah. And quite big canvas, as I as I remember. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, somehow, I think the bigger the canvas, the um, easier it is to express more things compared to a small canvas yeah, it's it's yeah. really limiting okay. for me i don't know well the thing is that for me as a as a curator and as uh, the person who has to position the art in a, in a gallery space sometimes gets tricky to have a huge canvases i understand the artists like to to paint on big surfaces because they can express better but uh, it gets really tricky then to kind of uh, have that in a in a I mean it's okay in a big gallery, but then when you have to position that in the house, sometimes gets a little bit difficult, but still it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So um as you know, I started in Dubai. Yeah. Uh, trying to to bring a, a little bit of uh, of Africa, using Africa as a world for a continent, not not as a as a specific location. To the region um we did a lot of exhibitions a lot of cultural events to be able to engage with the community and to explain a little bit more what was all about so uh, i didn't actually start that long ago it was only 2016 
more or less uh, when, when you started. <laughs> I, I can yeah. say that. Yeah. But uh, why Africa? Why Africa? Uh, see, the thing is that uh, when I when I first started to travel to to explore the African countries, uh, it was purely for my personal uh, pleasure and personal research. Uh, I kind of bumped into some artists and I wanted to know a little bit more about them. So I uh, spent time with them, talking to them, uh, learning from them why they were painting, what was the reason, how they were expressing uh, you know, their life or, or their situations. And as more I was going back to, to visit them, more I, I felt connected. And there was a moment that I, I kind of uh, felt that they, they needed to be exposed a little bit more internationally as well, because all that beauty and all that uh, uh, talent and messages that were, they were uh, trying to say, it was a little bit, um, how can I say, not wasted, but like needed more exposure, more global exposure. This is how I started in Dubai. Uh, after some time, um, we wanted to find a second place, second home for, for our uh, artist to, to do the same. And this is how we end up in Venice. In 2019, we opened a space in Venice as well, thinking of Venice as a cultural hub. Uh, uh, of course, we all know that Venice hosts the uh, Biennale every, every, every uh, second year, Arte and uh, Architecture. And, uh, having the place having my space in in such a such a city is uh, a great uh, possibility also for the artist as we also have a residence residency program for uh, for artists to come and visit and you know well that because you were one of the <laughs> one of them this past year uh venice for me is like um, a museum an open air museum everywhere you go everything you see and you look at is uh, is part of the history and kind of you you by living there by staying there you kind of intake all of it which is good for me and is good for for the artist i work with so yeah. during during 2020 even the, the the big global pandemic we managed to get you to venice right <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> yeah. that that was an adventure of a lifetime <laughs> yeah, that was an adventure. I remember when when we picked you up from the airport in Milano, and yeah. we drove down to the, to Venice, and then you had to quarantine for fourteen days. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, that yeah. was something. At first, it looked like the fourteen days would come to an end. Yeah, but, uh, it was good because we had a small terrace, right? So you could get get out and see the roofs of Venice. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't really boring at home. You guys made it fun. I didn't really <laughs> feel like I was locked up at all. Mm. Yeah. Tell me a little bit. What was your first impression when you when you enter? Like, of course, not the day that because you kind of had to to be locked down in my apartment for fourteen days. But when you started to go around to explore the city, how did you feel? Like, what was uh, let's say the difference between what you see in in Lagos, not only see, but like perceive and and the, the feelings in Venice, like how was, tell me a little bit. Well, first of all, the first time I stepped out, I think the first things that amazed me was that there were no cars and there were no bikes and you have to walk about everywhere, yeah. literally everywhere. And they have, it was, it was really unique because it was the first time I was staying somewhere that the houses were on water and, <laughs> and, and it was the first time I was staying that long in Europe. So it was the first mm -hmm. time for a lot of things, going out, seeing all the people, the language that I can't understand, but, you know, seeing people communicate and seeing how, um, calm, although I heard that if not for the pandemic, Venice is really crowded. But seeing it in that calm state, I, I prefer it. And I think I was really, really lucky to have come at that point. So the first, the first things that caught my attention was the, the social, the construct of the, um, I don't know how to say it, the way everything is programmed to work there is mm -hmm. a huge contrast from the way things are 
program to work on this side of the world. And somehow it created this um, air of relief and, you know, air of less tension and less stress. And somehow it made me to be more patient with my work. Okay. Yeah, they, it, it, I don't know, it's, Ven Venice is magical somehow. Probably <laughs> yeah. another city won't make me feel that way, but everything was really, really beautiful with the weather. And Tell me a little bit. Food. <laughs> yeah, this food. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the institutional side. Um, like we all know that in Venice we have a lot of not only museums but even like uh, uh, churches and all kind of cathedrals. They're kind of all uh, filled with uh, art and uh, big big names that I'm sure you get some some uh, inspiration from them. How is the, the situation in, in uh, like, let's say, in Lagos, which is, I mean, quite a big uh, city uh, compared to other cities in Africa? Do you have a lot of uh, institutions, a lot of places where you can actually go and uh, check, I don't know, check the art of other artists or, you know, kind of uh, be exposed to other uh, works from other artists like yourself? Uh, yes, but these places are not properly um you know set up these in fact the easiest way to experience okay. another artist in lagos would be to go to their studio but mm -hmm. in terms of institution it's it's not really excellent here it's it's not really excellent in venice you can visit if not for the pandemic you can visit tons of museums and you know churches and you can get inspired i was inspired by the the large figurative you know paintings from the past but he, down here to be honest it's difficult to even find two museums not more of three four i only know of one and it's a private um okay museum. apart from the national museum where you can't really go and you know see proper art it's not what the national museum should be like so institutional wise like i said it's a, it's a huge contrast down here it's, it's you have to you have to do practically everything yourself if you want to get inspired if you want to observe older artists you have to you know look for all that stuff by yourself they're not they're not preserved and stored and kept for you to you know come to research. Yeah. So you are you are you are a self-taught artist. So how did you uh, get to? I mean, how did you start to look at art? Like just through the computer, like on internet, or did you have to buy books? I mean, how did you learn? Or how did you confront yourself if you don't have this kind of uh, public uh, spaces? Yeah. Uh, okay. How it all started? I was in my third year in the university. And about that time, I, some realities in life made me understand that a job can never be secure. Again, okay? mm -hmm. you can lose your job anytime as long as you work for someone. So I wanted to, you know, build a career around something that I could do by myself. And I knew that, okay, I can draw right from when I was small. Okay. So that particular day i decided that okay since i can do this i i can be an artist professionally so i went online and i looked up um, art and the first things that popped up was um pencil realism you know when you use pencil to draw photographs and when i saw them i was amazed and i couldn't believe that they were pencil work. <laughs> so that challenged me and I started, I wanted to learn. So I would watch YouTube videos, I would okay. go on social media and follow the artists and look at their processes. So basically there were no books at first, just videos and it was difficult because I was in school. I had to you know, pass exams, go for tests and find time to learn. And something happened in my final year. I don't think I've really said this anywhere. I, I failed one of the courses and my lecturer called me and he tracked my results and was surprised that I failed that particular course. And he asked me that, why did I fail? And I told him that 
to be honest, I've been spending my time doing art and I wanted to do art and I couldn't wait to, you know, graduate from the university first to start learning the basics of art and that was the cause of my distraction. And he favored me. I didn't have to write that exam. Okay, so that's how it started, just the internet and from there. Well, you know, that's good. That's good that we, we that you guys have access to internet and that is working. So uh, that's that's very that's a very good uh, good point. Um, you know, here I mean here in in Europe, I um, I believe everywhere uh, for an artist to be recognized, somehow they have to to get acknowledged by a museum, maybe or the big collections, let's say uh, public or anyway like very important uh, collectors. Um, and obviously, it starts a little bit, a little bit from your own uh, circle, uh, your own country. So, how is this in uh, in in Nigeria? As you you said earlier, there are not that many museums, and the one that is open is like a private one. So, do you how how you will be recognized internationally? You still you kind of jump out from your country. You go straight to look for museums. In Europe or in America, or is uh, there is like a, a way, a process, or, or there there are um, good galleries here that okay. do a lot of work for young artists. And so through the galleries, you will go. Yeah, through the galleries. The galleries they mostly private owned. They do a lot of you know personal work for okay. young artists, and this have been the means for some artists to you know get internationally recognized but some other artists really find their way themselves because it's difficult the spaces the opportunity for the galleries here to work with you is really tight mm -hmm. so just very few favored people you know get into galleries that after after all take them international but most most of my contemporaries most artists i know that are doing well most of them had to forge the way by themselves, you know, then go to the internet and social media, you know, sending mails and, and the rest. So the galleries here actually help, even if we don't have proper um, museums. Yeah. So um, lately there's been this um, huge rush for contemporary African art. It's, it's, it's very, very clear and observe, very observable. I don't know, from your angle as a curator, why do you think this is? Why do you think there are a lot of collectors now wanting to buy African art? Why do you think there's a lot of focus on African art? Yeah. Well, I, I believe that uh, Africa was always, as a, as a art, was always there, uh, was a little bit unexplored because it's, Still an exotic place, and sometimes it's very hard to access. Uh, with the help of internet, it's a little bit easier to kind of get there. In the same way, you you were able to learn to be a, to become a, an artist from outside, looking into the African continent. We can find a little bit more. Um, the the, the, the fi financially speaking is uh, is on. Um, is on on the rise there is a lot of uh, potential investment so there are a lot of people trying to to to, to discover some uh, some good artists and to start collecting them um socially i believe that there are some uh, situations like last year we had the uh, black life lives matter uh, protest in us that started a whole new approach towards the 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 uh, let's say the African African art or African artists trying to expose them more or trying trying to include them more in the international uh, events and museums as well. The things that are still not that much probably. Um, I mean, in the past maybe was not there was not that many uh, that much attention. But I think also it's like people are always looking at what is um, standing next to them first. And then little by little, you kind of start looking uh, further uh, down. Um, 
is definitely a good time for for everything that is uh, coming from uh, African uh, African ground. Uh, we can we can mention uh, one fifty four as an answer that is outside the continent, and then on the continent we have like a lot of them in in in, C in Cape Town and in Johannesburg. We used to uh, now they are mainly uh, migrated online, but there are a lot of initiatives and with the help of um, of internet and a little bit of globalization we can all see it and access to it so it's kind of i believe it's a natural step so it's uh, it's really it's a really a good good moment to explore and as i was saying earlier is uh, is something is something new so it gives you that little bit of uh, of um kind of interest and excitement to discover something that is a little bit far from what you know already so it creates a lot of nice engagement what do you why what why do you think is happening now in your opinion why do you what what do you see well like you said i i i i really do not know but i agree to all you said about the whole um natural floating i think it has naturally flowed um to this part of the world mm -hmm. at this time but personally if i'm to say i really do not still understand how the flow works well i think everything with the whole black movement thing now and everything going on around the world i think it's only natural that african artists have been sorted after at this point mm -hmm. but yeah that question has always been on my mind because i wonder i wonder i, I think i and my contemporaries probably are a bit lucky to be born in this time yeah well it's an interesting time for sure uh, and i believe that each time has its own uh, peculiarities and its own difficulties so it, like i was just the other day talking to somebody and we are saying oh there is a pandemic who who knows what is gonna happen i said well in 80s was something else and in the 50s we had uh, uh, the world war and before that even worse so the, each time each time has something that the humanity has to deal with so, and everything is kind of uh, bringing challenges and uh, successes. So out of it, we are, uh, I mean, we are becoming stronger and more knowledgeable, hopefully. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. So listen, do you, do, you know, do you know anybody that uh, has moved out from, um, like an artist that has moved out from, from uh, Nigeria or some other countries in Europe uh, and that is still practicing art? Yeah, my yeah. friend. Okay. I have a close friend, Ken. Where did he go? He's in London currently. London. Okay, and he's yeah. still practicing. Yeah, yeah. He, although he just moved out last year. Okay, okay. But aside from the one I know personally, I've heard of there are a number of artists that have taken that step, yeah, located from Lagos. Most of them via um, a master's program. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you do you feel or do you think that uh, what is um, uh, how can I how can I say it um, what what is surrounding you now is influencing your work somehow right yeah. do you think that once you move your move the country where you live in do you think this is also affecting or you will you will still kind of try to maintain your uh, origins and uh, kind of try to remember or to yeah. Uh, I think I think I think even if you maintain your origin, the, the environment has a sure way of influencing the artist. Even if you try to retain your basics and everything, a change of environment definitely, definitely either in your choice of colors or mm -hmm. your choice of costume for your subjects or your the choice of subject matter, what to paint about, it definitely, it has to influence. Definitely, it can't be the same. That's why it's really interesting for artists to travel. Personally, 
if traveling was for free, I'd be traveling every week. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, it will be nice. It will be nice for everybody to do that. So, what did you? Uh, what was the um, uh, the thing that most mostly stuck on your head from Venice? Like, what is that you see coming in your work that you kind of took out from Venice and took it with you to back back to Lagos? Well, well I when I had something a kind of discussion like this with Chris, and I said the strongest thing Venice painted on me, it's not visible because mm -hmm. it's it's mental, it's patience. I I became more patient. I became more because actually when I started working I was very, very much interested in detail. But along the line, rush and numbers and but in Venice that really came back the need for patience and attention to detail. I think that was the strongest um, impact. Although there are other impacts, like um, trying to, you know, put more subjects in my work, trying mm -hmm. to make the figures more, you know, proportionally accurate, due to trying to add contrast. It gets trying to play more with light and darkness and shadows, and this is because Tintoretto's works struck me. At um, what's the name of that place? At the San Rocco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it the one cl around where close to where I was staying, close to San yeah. Polo? Yeah, that's it's Scuola, Scuola something. Scuola San Rocco, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, Tintoretto's work really struck me. I loved the the way the the shadows were working. Again. Well, I noticed also in your latest work, you, you introduced the skies. Yeah, yeah. The typical of Venetian skies are beautiful. I mean, we we can see in the past a lot of artists uh, painting the skies in like uh, this beautiful blue and purplish and pinkish that it gets in the in the late evening and early morning. And I saw you you kind of that one also was something new to your uh, to your work. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the sky in Venice is beautiful. It's, it helps, like, it helps you put in a lot of ideas for creating beautiful skies. You know, the more you see them, the easier it is to create them in your head. So that's very true. That's very, very true. The, the landscape, the water, the yeah, reflections, all that. It's an it's an incubator of creativity as a city. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. somewhere that everybody would love to come back to. Yeah, well, let's see. let's see. Maybe, maybe this year, without that much many problems like last year, we can make it happen again. Happen again. <laughs> Probably, I'd be glad. <laughs> yeah. So glad. All right. Um, I think we we are um, we are okay. We are done here. Yeah, we've, we've, we've spoken about practically everything. <laughs> Uh, how how is it work and Dubai these days with the pandemic? Uh, well, see, we are now preparing. There is a major event in Dubai, which is Art Dubai. It happens yeah. every year since uh, ten years. Uh, last year has uh, had to be postponed because of the pandemic. So this year is confirmed, uh, but they have uh, uh, changed the location. So they are preparing for it. Uh, there is a lot of um, um, prevention measures to make it uh, make it happen. So uh, masks are always on. We have to stay in a ventilated uh, venue, and um, and uh, yeah. I mean, apart from that, they are managing quite well. So everything is gonna is gonna is gonna happen. With, uh, we we're gonna be uh, be part uh, of our Dubai with uh, with the uh, gallery, and uh, of course you you are part of uh, of the of the program. So we're gonna be so excited to see your works with some influence from Venice, um, and um, yeah, I mean that's that's a little. Bit. 
Well, that's cool. I I can't wait for the show. So yeah, and also in Venice, uh, I wanted to mention also in Venice we we managed to uh, secure a very uh, large space. Uh, we are looking to have a very extensive program, uh, not only exhibition-wise, but also culturally, uh, to bring a little bit more of uh, Africa to, to the Venetian uh, scene, uh, organizing also cultural uh, events, book readings, and uh, these uh, this events where we can engage and create connection with, uh, with a, a local um, community. Uh, our concept is a little bit like a, like a living room, so what we are trying to achieve is to make our visitors very relaxed when they come in. They don't have to feel pressure of a white cube uh, concept, but more of a homey environment so they can sit down, they can have a coffee, they can look at the art, chat about mostly anything they wish to chat about. And just to create a little bit of uh, that engagement that uh, however we need to appreciate art, especially for something that is uh, quite new to, to many, many, many audiences that is uh, coming from, from the African continent. So um, I, I think in that, in that regards, we will also be very happy to have any input from, from you or from any of, uh, you know, people that are surrounding you that have some contribution or some, something that they can share. It will be very good to, you know, to engage with them. If, if, well, sounds interesting. Sounds do, you, do, you, do you know anybody that is like a writer or poet or musician? Yeah, musician, like a, a band that can play in local tune. Yeah. Yeah, I know a group. I know yeah. a group. But for writers and, and poets, I'd have to, you know, speak to... I can't vouch for anyone, but I know if I talk to my friends, there are a lot mm -hmm. of young people that are doing creative cultural stuff. So... So how do you, what do you think from, from like, from Nigeria, what is the, the mostly, uh, Latin, like, Latin, what is the, the biggest medium that the artist express themselves? Is it painting or sculpture? I think it's painting. Painting? Yeah, there are less people involved in sculpture and a few in, involved in metal sculpting, very few. But I think mm -hmm. it's painting, about probably 80%. Of Nigerians and painters, yeah. So I I look forward to add Dubai and to the opening of the bigger space in Venice. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for your time. Thank you too. And uh, we'll we'll chat soon again. Yeah. So. Okay. Right, thank you everybody for listening and for uh, taking the time to view our conversation. <laughs> All right, thank you all for listening and thank you all for being part of this. See you soon. See you soon, bye. Bye.